Hi and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's a while since I've done any um, more static stuff, any advice or um, things like that. So um, one of my older videos has been doing a little bit better, has been getting more interactions and it was a video about women and saddle pain. And so I thought maybe doing something kind of going back to that a little bit. So some, some more kind of advice things rather than just going out on rides. Um, might be kind of useful to some people. So today I'm going to be putting a new inner tube in my front tyre on my gravel bike. Um, it's a, a self-sealing slime tyre, so I haven't gone tubeless yet, um, but this is the kind of next best thing. So because it's the time of year where you're getting lots of thorns and things like that, um, if you've got self-sealing tubes, there's more chance of that kind of sealing if you get a puncture than having to stop and repair at the side of the road. So I've got one in the back already, um, but when I took when I put my winter tyres on I took the tubes out because I've got the Schwalbe Marathon Road Plus so they're quite thick anyway and didn't need the additional slime tube but when I put the summer tyres back on um, only one of the older the slime tubes was um, was kind of useful so I've got a new one I'm going to install that now and I'm going to show you how. So a couple of things before we get started so you're going to need your tube so I've gone for the Bontrager um, brand of this slime filled tube the numbers on the front denote the size of your tyre. So this is a 700 um, in, in terms of how, like the actual wheel size, and then 35 to 44 C is the width of the tyre. So um, I'll show you on the tyre how to find out, that out if you're not sure. Uh, we've got some tyre levers and we've got a track pump. So any kind of pump will do that can get the air in. I've got the, a track pump because it's got the um, gauge on there so you can see how much air you've put in um, and inflate it to the right level. So if you're actually looking at the bike and you're not quite sure what size inner tube you need, first of all, if, if you've got your bike with you, you could always take it into your bike shop um, and they'll be able to show you. Um, but if you want to have a look for yourself, if you're ordering the tube online, um, then on the actual tyre wall itself, it's got your tyre pressures, the minimum and maximum tyre pressures. That will either be in PSI, um, which is pounds per square inch, or it'll be in a uh, bar. So um, it, if it says, sometimes it will only say one or the other. So you can usually kind of do a conversion online somewhere um, if you Google that. And it will also tell you the um, the size of the, the tire. So you know what size tube to find. So I'll just show you on my bike where that is. So on the tire wall here, so this is the inflation. So it's the, uh, what are we? 35 to 55 PSI or 2.5 to 4.5 bar. So that is how much you inflate the tyre to. And then a bit further around, it's going to be upside down. Uh, but just along here, it tells you it's a, you can see here, 700 times 42C. So 700 is the actual size of the wheel and the 42C is the width of the wheel okay so the first thing that we're going to do is remove the front wheel from the bike so we do this by releasing the quick release skewer or axle through axle try not to lose any of the springs from the axle. And then on this bike, it just lifts out. So you've then just got your wheel. And first thing that we need to do is deflate it. So we're going to remove the cap there, that's a little bit bent, that. And literally just push down. So this is a, this is a pressed valve. So if you'd got a Schrider valve, you'd need to push something up inside it to release the air. But with this one, you can just lift that up. So you want to deflate as much of the air as you can get out of it. Because if there's much air left in, it's going to make the tyre difficult to get off the uh, rim. OK. 
Okay, so that's pretty good. So the next thing that you do is try and pull the um, tire back from the rim. So in, in the uh, centre of the actual wheel itself, there's a little um, recess in the middle. So what I want to do is push the tire into that middle bit because that gives us a little bit more flexibility to get the tire off. So these are tubeless ready tires. So sometimes they're a bit tricky once they've seated to get them away from the, that's it, it's coming away now. So I want to get both sides of the tires so it's nice and loose into that reservoir in the middle. So I'm gonna remove, there's like a little knot there that just helps the valve stay in place. So this is where we're gonna get the tire lever. So I generally just use the one on occasions you might need to use two. So I start away from the valve, so I'm turn the valve round and going to push the tyre lever under the beading of the tyre and we're going to try and push that away. So in an ideal world sometimes if tyres are a bit tight they don't come away very easily which is maybe when you might have to use the second lever. If you need to use the second lever you could just hook it around the rim like that and then just insert the second lever and it stops the beading falling back into the rim of the tyre, but I don't think that's going to be a problem today. So we can just, it's easier if I stand up to do this. Just run the lever all the way around. There's no need to remove the tyre completely both sides from the actual wheel because it can be a bit of a ball ache to get back off again, or back on again rather. So. Remove the tyre. So that's a good inner tube. So I want to put that somewhere safe and keep that, keep that as a spare. So what I'll do is I'll fully deflate that, push all the air out and then keep that somewhere safe. You can see this is one that I've already repaired a few times, I think. <laughs> so, right, back in a second with the new inner tube. So there's a couple of rules of thumb when you're changing a tyre, um, good practice. And that is to line the logos of your tyre up with where your valve is. So the hole where the valve will come through is just here and line the logo up there. What that does is in the event you get a puncture, um, if you can't find the hole on the actual inner tube itself, but the thorn or whatever's punctured the tyre is still in the tyre or you can see a, a, a mark in the external casing, um, you can then figure out on the inner tube from where that was lined up, where the, the puncture is likely to be. So that makes it a little bit easier just to, to find that if you're fixing that at the side of the road. So we're gonna get the new tube out the box. So it comes like this. So if you are changing your tyre because you've got a puncture, obviously if um, you, you need to check the casing to make sure that there's not still any debris or anything in it. So um, it, it might be an idea, particularly if you can't see it straight away to, to remove the casing completely from the wheel, although you might not need to do that. And just gently feel around the inside. Just be careful because if it is sharp and there's a thorn in there and you're whipping your fingers around, you could cut yourself. So just gently feel around the inside of the casing. Um, and if you obviously if you come across a thorn, you can remove that. The other thing to do is just check the actual inside of the wheel itself. So checking that your tape is flat because if, if that comes up um, and reveals the holes where your spokes go through, that's a, an entry point for debris and you could end up getting a puncture. 
Um, so yeah, just make sure that's nice and flat. You can repair that with new tape or electrical tape if it's um, not in great nick. So before we install the new inner tube, one of the problems that we can get um, using tubes um, is getting pinch flats. So potentially you could insert the new tube, get your um, tire back over it, start pumping it up. I've had this happen actually, and the tire explodes. Um, and that can be because you've actually caught the um, part of the tube in when you've put the tire back on, that the, the, the um, beading of the tire sits on top of the inner tube. So one of the ways that we can try and avoid that is to put a little bit of air in it before we start putting it back in on the wheel. So maybe one, or, just one or two little pumps should be enough to just literally you know, that's that's not kind of pumped up, just literally putting a little bit of air in that. Just so we can uh, make sure that's not going to, well, as best we can, make sure it's not going to pinch. So start by pushing the valve into the wheel. So one of the things you want to make sure is that your valve is straight um, through the valve hole. And if it's not, if it's at a, an angle, one of the potential things that could happen is that it just rips off while you're riding um, and then you're not going to be able to repair the tyre, uh, repair the tube. So what I do is try and put the tyre flat. If you've got disc brakes, try and avoid putting your fingers on the, um, on the disc because the grease and things on your fingers can interfere with it working properly. So once your tube is nicely in there, start going round and just gently pushing the tire over. So again, you're sort of trying to, trying to push it back to that middle reservoir. If you don't push it into that middle reservoir, by the time you get to the top of the tire, it's gonna to be too tight to push it all in. So, and that's, that can be a bit of a uh, nightmare if you're trying to repair something roadside. So as you can see here, you sort of get towards the top and it gets really difficult to lift this bit over. So I'm gonna make sure that that's in that little recess all the way around, which it appears to be. And then tire lever, just use my tire lever to just start gently pushing that over. Make sure that your inner tube isn't hanging down in there. You don't want to nip that as you're trying to push this over. One of the things that can happen um, is that, that that just starts flicking out all the way around. It can, it can be a bit of a ball ache at times, um, but if you just sort of do it a little bit at a time, the other thing that could happen, if you go right for the middle and just try and push it over, you might snap your tyre lever if you've got plastic ones, which I would recommend. If you get metal ones, you can damage the rim of your tyre. It's good an idea as it might seem to start with. So just that little last bit there. Right, we're in. So again, I'm just going to push all the way around, make sure that that's gone right into the middle so there's no part of the um, beading that's clamping down on that new tube. So that's great. So the recommended inflation on this again was, was it 35 to 55, I think. 35 to, oh, 35 to 65. So I usually go for relatively low tire pressures because um, when you go for a high tire pressure and they're pumped up really hard, Firstly, you feel every bump in the road, the harder they are. But um, what you want to avoid punctures is for the tyre to actually deform a little bit as it goes over things. So when you've got less air in there, uh, the tyre the will deform a little bit more. When you're running tubes rather than tubeless, the danger there is that you do end up with pinch flats. So it's trying to get that happy medium of having enough air in that, that it doesn't pinch flat. Um, and enough air that you're not kind of like feeling like you're cycling through custard when you're on the road. Um, 
but not so hard that it's a really uncomfortable ride when you get off the road. So we're going to put this little nut back on. We're not going to tighten it all the way because um, as the tyre starts to inflate, it might pull up. And if you've tightened it all the way, it doesn't allow for that to pull back in. And again, it could just rip it off. So um, I've got a universal attachment on my pump. So one for the Schrader, Schrader, however you pronounce that, and one for Presta. So we've got the Presta valve here, making sure it's open. Ooh, this is where it all goes wrong. Slide that onto there. That's it. And then we're going to inflate. until it gets to so be cautious when you're starting to put the air in make sure it feels like it's inflating but just take it nice and steady because these are tubeless ready tires they will pop at some point onto the rim to seat so you'll hear a little bit of creaking as they seat It's difficult to get the air in that actually, so I'm not going to force it there. Just and then one of the things I tend to do is just bounce it. I won't do that too much while I'm inside because uh, set the dogs off. But uh, bounce it outside um, just to make sure it's kind of all seated nicely. So now we've got some air in, we can tighten that nut up a little bit. Not super tight, but just so it's secure. And it's going to stop your um, valve moving about. Put your valve cover on. And then we're going to just reinstall the tyre on the bike. So you just line up your disc brake with the pads. And there we go. Making sure that your nut holes line up with the bit your axle goes through. Obviously these are all the technical descriptions, nut holes. And So that's it for this one. Hopefully you found that useful and you can see that it's not a massive job. It's not technical. It's not something that you need lots of skill to be able to do. It's just sort of understanding the easiest ways to kind of get things on and off. Um, one of the biggest problems that I've had in learning to change punctures and to change my tyres and things is just um, sort of making sure I get the beading pushed into that little recess in the middle of the wheel. Um, it makes a massive difference, making sure all, all the air is out while you're trying to get the get the tyre off. Sometimes if you've got brand new tyres and they can be a little bit tight that first time that you're putting them on and off, but usually um, you kind of get into the, the, the swing of it and after you've had them on and off once, um, once or twice then they're, they're a lot easier to do so uh, a roadside repair if you were if you got a puncture and you were just whipping it out and sticking a new tube in i mean maximum should take 10 minutes um it, you know it, probably quicker than that if everything's straightforward with getting getting the tire off and getting the new tube in um one of the things in terms of roadside repairs is worth getting a decent mini pump um some of them are kind of cheap and rubbish and you'll be there pumping forever in a day um, whereas some of them you can actually get a little bit more pressure in so that's useful um i've got one got one on here the little mini pump um but yeah if, if you find this kind of thing useful and you want me to do a, a few more sort of maintenance or repair type things then let me know and um yeah i shall oblige